are reminiscing about our road trip to the 2002 Olympic Winter Games in Salt Lake City, which yeah. was Jeff's first games. Indeed. And um, Jill and I had the opportunity to uh, fetal down there. Yes. Fetal down there. In at my, the time, my brand new Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, that's right. In the in the blue Volkswagen Beetle. So so here we are. So I had just taken Kyle, who was um, 10 months old. I had flown Kyle home to Kelowna to be with my parents. It's the first time I'd ever been away from him. I remember leaving him with my parents and thinking... You were worried you were a horrible mother. I don't know if he's going to remember me when yeah. I get back. It was awful. It was so awful. It was the first time that I'd really stood in Jeff's shoes and had uh, and had left him for any period of time. So I get home. Jill comes in the next day, and we are all packed up. And I, when I mean packed up, I mean more than you think you could put in a beetle trunk. It's amazing how much that little so car held. Much stuff in the beetle trunk. It was unbelievable. And uh, actually, a lot of us drove down. So um, Jeff's dad and his wife, Jill's mom, drove down, and Jeff's mom and her husband, uh, Marie and I, they drove down, and then there was, uh, they also had Tanya. They right? had Tan They took Tanya, because we brought Sorry. her back. Yeah, they took Tanya, Jeff's sister, and then Jill and I were in, uh, we're in the Beetle. Yep. So we're all driving down, and we all have, now, did we have cell phones? No, this was in the era of... Uh, no, we had a cell phone, But Jeff. it was before we were really comfortable using them. Yeah. So this is like 2002, okay? This is like pre-technology. Yeah. So we're driving down. I think we each had a cell phone. In case... For emergencies only. That's right. Yeah, because long distance on cell phones then, forget it. Yeah. And, um, oh, get a shot of that. Look at oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. We can tell the story while we're watching this beautiful oh scenery. Gosh. Look at you guys, look at the glaciers totally covered in snow in the sunshine. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. We are at the pass. There's the divide There's sign the only. You can't really you see, see it. Because of the snow. No, sort of saw it over the snow. There it is, Rogers Pass. Rogers Pass. There we go, there was the sign. So so we're driving down to Salt Lake City and um, 2002, we had no no uh, MP3 players. There was no, uh, no iPhones. There was no iPod at the time. So had to be satisfied with the six CD changer in the back of the trunk, which we could not get at because, there was as so previously mentioned, stuff. the trunk was packed to its fullest capacity. We, we figure it took us 15 or 16 hours, and we drove about 11 hours the, the first, first day, day 11 yep. or 12, and we all stopped in uh, Idaho Falls. Yes. We all stopped in Idaho Falls. Which is dry on Sunday nights, which we didn't know, and all we really wanted was beer and pizza, which... Couldn't get. No. Couldn't get. Yeah. Tell us about what happened at the border. Well, see, we show up at the border and we're a little nervous because it's the first time either of us have crossed the border after 9-11. And we'd been warned to expect delays and that it might be a problem, and so we're expecting that it might not be as easy as we're used to. And we show up and uh, the border guard says, so which one of you is the sister and which one of you is the wife? And we say, pardon me? And they say, well, one of you is the wife and one of you is the sister and you're competing, right? You're on your way to Salt Lake City for the Olympics? And we're going, did somebody call the police? Are like, we in are trouble? We in, we're or? thinking we are not getting past this border. There is we're no turning way. around here. We're in so much trouble. Unbeknownst to us, my parents had crossed the border half an hour before us. Watch out for a redhead and a blonde and a blue beetle. They'll be crossing behind us. One of them's my daughter. The other one's the daughter-in-law. We're on our way to Salt Lake City for the Olympics. So the border guards were all excited to see us and couldn't wait to tell the story about an Olympic athlete on their way, you know, the family of Olympian, Olympian on their way to the Olympics. And uh, yeah, we're all worried about crossing the border and they didn't, I don't even know if they actually looked at our passports in the end. I don't know if they did or not, but I'm telling you, we were scared out of our pants. Yep. We thought... Yeah. Like, Instead, <laughs> it was nothing. It was hilarious and easy and a piece of cake and... And man, did our parents ever think it was hilarious when we got to Idaho Falls and said, so, how did um, it go for you at the border? Yeah, what happened for you? <laughs> and yeah. yeah. Yo, what are some of the things that you think, um, what else are some of the differences? Um, I was thinking that, you know, the two passengers in the back are different. Uh, yes, we have kids this time. We have two children. We didn't have yeah. children and they wouldn't have fit in the Beetle anyway. No, right no. Here. 
Yeah, make some noise. Cell phones so we can Marco Polo a lot easier. Uh, to get in touch with people. Tracking people down on site is going to be so much easier. Yeah, well, compared to Italy, where we had no communication, communication. with literally anybody at any time, yeah. the fact that we are going into a, to our, it's in our same country, it's the same, same. time. Yes. Jill, we can text other people. Oh! And, and instant communication with results and instant replay. And There's something, there's something called texting that we yeah. just didn't even have. Yeah. And instant updates with Facebook and yeah, no um, so the oh, replays, social media. social media, Twitter, Facebook, all that. There wasn't a Facebook then. There wasn't eight years ago. It was so incredibly different. The media that is available now via the internet. But the, the Salt Lake City event, and I've been to rock concerts before. It was about 12 people deep, and it was a mosh pit at yep. the rail. Yep. And we d we thought, okay, well, we'll go stand at the rail because, you know, we want to be right by the track. Yep. Yeah, well, before the race even started, after standing there for about an hour and a half, we gave up on that. Yep. It was, forget it. Because it was, it was, seriously, it was like being squished. And we just got back. And as Jill said, there was no two-tier tickets at the time where there was start line and finish line and then all in the middle. But there was great jumbotrons and stuff. And um, the other thing about race day on, in Salt Lake City <clears throat> was that it basically slow, snowed slush. Yes. So very Vancouver-esque. Uh, it, it snowed slush for the seven the hours that we, that we were was soaking, soaking wet. wet. There was nothing that you could do to avoid it. No, and the track was covered in slush. And yeah, and, and it was the only day of the entire games that it wasn't clear and sunny, yeah. and it was on Jeff's race. Now that was back when they were only giving the Olympics for a skeleton one day with two runs as Instead opposed to what it's supposed to be as a proper world championships. Two days, four runs. Two days, four runs, right. It was Jeff's first game, so, you know, I don't know, like, it felt... There was, actually, it was exciting and yeah. novel and new. Yeah, I would say, actually, that his first games, to me, in Salt Lake City felt more like this one. Yes, there was, very exciting and new and yeah, it was cl still close to home almost. Yeah, there was such there a heightened was anticipation. The family feeling. And he, he had a chance at a medal. Yeah. Like he wasn't a medal, uh, medal favorite necessarily, yeah. but he had a good chance at a medal. Yeah. He did finish sixth, he was the top Canadian. Yeah. But um, so it's not that Italy wasn't exciting. I mean, heck, that's the one he won his medal, but it just wasn't, it wasn't the first. And it was a whole different country. We didn't speak the language. We, we had no communication. <laughs> I think the fact that we're going to be in Vancouver, which is home, like it's yeah. You know, you went, you lived in Vancouver. Jeff lived in Vancouver. You, the two of you had you, your friendship in Vancouver. That's home yeah. to you guys in a way that yeah, yeah. That was it is like like a little bit like going home. And and I grew up in BC. I'm yep. from BC, so driving this road, no stranger to that. No. And. Uh, Anyway, it's it's sort of like our, our eight-year uh, reunion, although I, I'm going to say not because of you, Jill. I don't plan to drive to another No, no, we're years. not doing it again in eight years. No. Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs>